This is Business and Economy Network. Hello, viewers. Glad to know you are watching our program. Those of you watching us in Fireway, Abuja, Port Harcourt, Ilori, Kano, Kaduna, Sokoto, Ilori. Those of you watching us outside the shelves of Nigeria. And those of you watching us via the online channels, I want to say thank you so very much. You are watching Business and Economy Network. My name is Thierry Peter Moche. Remember, you are watching Business and Economy Network. This program takes a look at business opportunities in Nigeria, government for and policy formulation, and the rest of that. Where we bring in experts, captains of industry, to analyze and highlight. For the program rundown today, for company in focus, today we are looking at an agency that's doing very well. Talking about Federal Road Maintenance Agency. I will have the managing director in the house. For straight talk, we have the managing director, chief executive officer of Bash, Bashmon Homes, looking at the deficit of housing in Nigeria. And not left out for spotlight, we have the managing director, chief executive officer of the Okomo Oil Palm Company, PLC. Look at this various unique organization, the agency that takes care of road maintenance and looking at Bashmon Home that takes care of housing deficit in Nigeria, and also o Okumu Palm that talks about agriculture and red palm in Nigeria. It's going to be an interesting watch. I'll be back after this starts. Relax yourself. It's going to be deep. It's going to be incisive. And I'll be back after this time out. The Federal Road Maintenance Agency, FEMA, is saddled with the responsibilities of maintaining Nigerian roads, especially federal roads. In a chat with the Business and Economy Network crew, the Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer of the agency, Engineer Nuruddin Rafin, that he advises Nigerian youths, especially young engineers, on the need to always strive for excellence and acquire needed skills pertaining to their field, considering engineering jobs presently available are lesser than the available employable graduates. He again stressed that only outstanding individuals most times get opportunity first with FEMA or things being equal. Well, if I can sum it up, the one thing for a young professional, an engineer, uh, is to say that you have to strive for excellence. Whatever you are doing, try to excel. You see, we have a situation today where we have the largest population in, in our history of graduate, particularly of concern to me, graduate engineers who do not have a job. And the reason why they don't have a job is there's not enough jobs created from engineering works. Uh, that is one. Secondly, uh, there are engineering jobs that come to be done in this country but are being taken up by people from outside. Um, so, if you try to excel, you always arm yourself with the best skill. Uh, recently, fortunately for us, there has been a series of executive orders by the federal government that have mandated anyone engaged in engineering in Nigeria to first use Nigerian skills first. And there's a number of range of opportunities where this manifests. And we've discussed this at uh, the Association of Consulting Engineers. And I think it's a, it's a big challenge for us all as individual and collective professionals. As individual, you need to arm yourself and hone yourself with the skill because there is now a legal mandate for incoming companies. They are, it makes better business sense for them to look at the skill in Nigeria first. It is cheaper. Uh, collectively, we have a responsibility as professionals to, to be diligent, to look around and see infractions on that policy and report it. And if you report to Corin, Corin will take action. And so I see a lot of opportunities here. It doesn't remove the fact that the, the number of engineering graduates outpaces the number of available slots. But if you are excellent in your profession, I have seen cases of young professional engineers who have earned themselves and they've gotten skills that force us to look out, seek them, and actually employ them. I have come across uh, really outstanding young people who have, uh, who have done things in software, who have, who have produced good engineering works, even in FEMA, and my attention has been moved to them. And we have, we have sat down, we have thought how to maximize opportunities for our youth. Uh, one of the recent things we did 
uh, in FEMA is to do what we call the stakeholder assisted right of way clearance uh, implementation. Basically, what it means is that clearing the roads along the right of way. The right of way of the federal highway is 18 meters from the center line on both sides. That that is the, that is the, that that land along that route belongs to nobody except the, the, because it falls on the right of way of the federal roads, and it is our duty to clear it. Sometimes you see overgrown bushes on the verges. Sometimes you go you need to go even beyond the verges. And we've gone to places where the communities themselves are saying, why don't you, not just for, uh, within the verges, why don't you go beyond and clear even more because of the menace of armed robbery and kidnapping. And we've done that in a few places where we found the, the community ready to come and assist even without paying, being paid. So because of that, we started this program where we, we register interested volunteer youth and uh, we, we, we document them and we deploy them. We buy kits and boots and tools for them and they clear the roads. And with that, the, our first trial is ongoing, it's about to finish now, is to take about 14, 15,000 youths from across the country and pay them the minimum wage, which used to be 18, now it will move to 30. And uh, for two months, we've engaged them, first, we first document them. Those without bank accounts, we get them to open the bank accounts because we have, we have to remit your money through your accounts. Uh, that's that's uh, mandatory. And then we, we deploy them to the work. And I found out even graduate engineers and non-engineers alike were ready and willing to participate in this program. Uh, not because we wanted to degrade them and take them as laborers, but they just felt it is better to get involved, it, 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 to feel important. We, we, get, we buy them the face cap and the kits and the... And the, and, the, and the boots, and they are proud to actually be involved. If you go around the country, you might find in one or two locations where these things have been happening. Uh, I think uh, this is an initiative that will enhance employment of youth, but I want us to take this just as the beginning and let us move further where we can get skills uh, appreciated, recognized, and deployed subsequently. Uh, I have already told my engineers uh, to keep an eye on those that excel and uh, we want to strive and sell the idea to government to keep funding this program at least twice in a year and, um, uh, and then from there we begin to recognize particularly engineering skills uh, that we can just employ subsequently as regular staff of FEMA. Having worked in various reputable institutions, gaining necessary experience and building the right capacity, Al-Haji Bashir Jimo saw a need to be met in the area of housing, considering its present high deficit level. This brought about the setting up of Bashmore Homes Limited, located in the heart of Lagos State, Nigeria. The firm, though young, has been able to over the years proffer simple, real-time realistic solutions to Nigerians, especially to middle-level earner. Locations where Bashmore Homes have been majorly fed are in Atom. Ekbe Shimawa to mention a few. Also, Bashmore Homes is a one-stop shop for all land documentations and sales of farm estates. Yeah, uh, the experience has, uh, has always been what I tell people anywhere I go. That one, you invest in real estates to gain appreciating value. You don't fold your hands, neither do you need billions to start real estate investments. We have a platform to which you can pay bit by bit. As I speak with you, there is a woman that sells tomato. She's having a full plot of land with us in Athens. And all she does is every week, after she finishes the sales, she comes to the office, pay for the land. At the end of three years, she used three years to pay for the land. Today, she's currently building, she has about 2,700 blocks already. She has completed her foundation, 2,700 blocks already on her land. If a tomato seller 
This is what I tell those in corporate world. If a tomato seller could tactically plant a life this way, then anybody that is earning salary has no reason not to want to venture or invest in real estate. What we do in order to shield against inflation is um, we ensure that all that is needed for the completion of a property or a building, we ensure that uh, is in place before the commencement of the building. The only v uh, variable costs there will be labor costs. And we have our labor. We have those we are training. I could remember during the, um, uh, the real estate conference, that, that was the same thing I discussed with some representatives of Lagos state government, that um, real estate has the capacity to give 100,000 jobs annually in Lagos state. Because as we speak, most of our tilers are from Kotonou. As we speak, those that are doing our roofing now, they are from Ghana. So there is a need for government to step up, develop young people that can take over, that can learn this trade and take over from the Kotonou boys and the Ghanaians that are currently doing our tiling and kitchenettes and roofing. There is a, a department that uh, we have just developed. The department is a um, uh, property investment part, uh, department. What we do is that we have partners in South Africa, we have partners in the US, we have partners in the UK. These are uh, uh, property firms that uh, will assist Nigerians, this time uh, the upper boundary Nigerians, to purchase properties, foreign investment properties in these countries. And um, we've done one or two transactions. And I tell you what, uh, because of the level of uh, legal development there and the benefit of investment there uh, is, uh, is one of the departments now that uh, is uh, really developing in real estate, foreign acquisition of property. And this, I think, I will want to advise the Nigerian government now. There are countries in the world that if you invest in their properties, you, 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 should, you have to hold the property housing issue properties for five years, you'll be issued with the country's passport. You become a citizen in that country. And this is a model through which they are using to attract foreign direct investment. We have a lot of Lebanese. We have a lot of Indians. We have a lot of uh, 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 South Africans that want to invest in Nigeria if there are other investment benefits, especially in Nigeria's real estate. And I think this is an angle, this is an aspect, this current government that is currently sourcing for uh, uh, what they call a foreign direct investment. If you want a good FDI, develop a national policy on housing development. And if you've done that, that will attract foreigners to want to invest in Nigeria. But most times they ask, okay, what aside owning this asset, what are the additional uh, 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 additional benefits? All you need to get a property in the U.S. is for you to register as a taxpayer. You do not need to be residing there, and that is what Nigerian government should do. We need it more than the U.S. and the U.K., especially now. And these guys will come in with the phone, buy properties. These are institutional investors come in with the phone, buy properties over the next 20, 30 years. And we are lucky in this part of the world because we have one of the most highly appreciating value of properties. Government need to be open with building approvals. You should know what is the requirement for you to get what certification. If you are building, you have to do piling or you have to do rafting. You should, you should be able to punch your system online with the building board control board and the parameter through which you need or documents you need to submit to kickstart is there. But a situation where, sorry, you get familiarized with the approving authority. They are supposed to be the one that will grade you. 
They are supposed to be the one that will assess you, but you are interfacing with them one on one instead of them interfacing with your project. That is where the, the issue starts from. Now, we are talking of the second aspect of it are the professionals, those handling building, the engineers and co. Most times in Nigeria, engineers always want to cost a property and ask you to pay. It could be on piecemeal. You can say, okay, from digging to foundation, this is the cost. Just give me the, the price. They will not want you to know that what kind of foundation are you doing? Are you doing rafts? What do you have in the approval? What exactly do you want to do? Are you using 12 mm? Are you, you, you see, and uh, before you know it, engineers, qualified engineers, most times are not always on site. They are not always on site. They will just have a supervisor, a young boy that just finished, uh, probably a diploma, or someone, a drought man that they have trained, and put him on site. And these are the issues. These are the primary issues of building collapse. And lastly, to developers, greed. Greed. I think it's high time uh, we, we, we know that the love of the country and love of humanity supersedes any financial gain. You will not because you, your, your project has been oversubscribed and uh, uh, you have a building approval of, say, six flats, you want to increase it to eight because the, there is oversubscription. And that is where the developers, I always tell my fellow developers, I said, look, the most important thing is it's better for you to expand vertically than wanting to do things that will end up and thank god the federal government after the collapse of lagos building constituted a committee on collapse of building and they submitted the white paper to the president we are waiting to see the kind of action we, the, the 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 government of the day will want to take so that it, at least that will foster further occurrence of uh, such however to identify a genuine real estate firm. I always tell people it's easy. We were discussing earlier on. I said, go to Naira Land. Go to online. Google the name of the real estate. People will talk. People will say, you have one or two information about the real estate firm. That will give you an insight to what you're about going. Uh, I have uh, on online mentioned lots of people. References is key. Uh, we've done things with GNLD. We've done things with Olam Cooperative. Uh, we've done things with Electrics. These are these are multinationals with their cooperative. So for us, uh, 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 our 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 job speaks for itself. And uh, I, I tell Nigerians that. Uh, for you to identify a real a, a quality real estate firm, your first step is to Google the company's name. Check the profile. If you check the profile, I'm a risk person. I did risk management, and uh, I know background checks do, it does not end in adverts because adverts will tell you what you want to hear but it's your responsibility to conduct a background check on the company that you're about putting in your money. Nigerian companies with huge determination. These are companies that um, started uh, less than 10, uh, 15 years ago. Most of the real estate firms that you see today in Nigeria started less than 25 years ago. So uh, 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 because Nigeria are enterprising people, because Nigerians are committed to whatever we are doing as people, I think that spirit of Nigeria is what is keeping us going, irrespective of the current economic realities. And um, I think with our interaction, I had cause of going to lots of conferences. And uh, last year I was in the UK. Uh, we discussed with uh, some property guys also in the UK. And uh, I tell you what, most of them could not just phantom how property companies are surviving in Nigeria with the heretic uh, economic situation. But I tell them what, with determination, you can summon virtually everything.
In a response to possible advice to younger Nigerians and non-Nigerians who aspire to be like him, Dr. Graham Heffer, the Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer of Okomo Oil Palm Company PLC, one of Nigeria's largest palm oil producing and processing company, sitting on no less than a 34,000 hectare of palm seedlings, fruits and rubber located in Edo State, Nigeria. The Managing Director pleads with youth to learn to always go through the long route as shortcuts most times do not end well. He encourages young ones to be hardworking because life, in all fairness, is not simple. Everyone must work before design pleasure and not pleasure before work well you know for for, for me it, it's probably very simple you, you you will not get anything if you don't work for it uh, life is not simple if you go out and look for it you will get it but uh, today unfortunately I see a lot of the times that there's this uh, this uh, thought process that uh, I, I want I want the Mercedes Benz first before I start to work the Mercedes Benz comes after you've worked and for a while, you know, so the short term gratification is, is, a, is, is a problem for me. People have to understand that in the, if you want to earn something, you have to do it the long way. You cannot just short circuit it. So I'm saying to, to the youth of today, work hard, don't take shortcuts. And I can promise you at the end of the day, what you see that you have done will be more than enough of uh, a, a gratification for you uh, at the end of your life. Um, but try and shortcut it, it doesn't work. Uh, in my humble opinion, uh, we are still floundering. Uh, we are, I have major issues with, with the, the, the latest uh, African uh, uh, Free Trade Act. Uh, I, in my personal opinion, and I hope I'm wrong, if that happens in Nigeria, we can close up and go home. Uh, it, it, it is a worry for me. Uh, I may be, uh, I'm not up to date with it. I'm hoping that, uh, and I, I'm very proud of the president for saying that he, he reads very slowly. I beg him to please carry on reading very slowly uh, because I think he was very wise in that decision. Uh, secondly, um, I, I would love to see far more coming from the National uh, Ministry of Agriculture, federal. Uh, we have had absolutely no guidance uh, since uh, the beginning of the uh, of, of 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 the the new the new uh, minister's uh, reign, and we are begging and looking for that kind of guidance uh, because right now, for instance, I'll give you an example. We we have a, a, a an oil palm sector road roadmap. Now this was done in the previous regime, and. We are still waiting for something to happen. It, it is causing chaos. You can see uh, there's illegal imports, there's, there's, there's waivers, there, it, it's just a shambles. Now, we are hoping that if we can get that on the road, everybody will be coordinated to make sure that we can hopefully create a, an industry that is viable, that is strong, that will assist not only ourselves in, in, in growing, but also the government in growing in terms of taxes and all that kind of thing, which they are losing by the billions now uh, because there is just no continuity. So we are asking that the Federal Ministry of Agriculture become more vocal and, and, and show us direction. For nearly four years now, we have seen nothing coming from there. As far as the state goes, we are starting to see uh, uh, more and we are very appreciated, uh, appreciative of that. This is Business and Economy Network. Well, 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 yeah, this is where time will permit us on your program. I want to say a big thank you to all of you and those of you who have been making inquiries you know, concerning our program, Business and Economy Network, especially most of you who have called in and those of you sent emails, we want to say thank you so very much. We are here 
to serve you better and we are doing our very very best this is where we draw the wrap of the program they say tomorrow is yet another day but think about this determination perseverance and focus will always take a man an organization or a group to the height think about this very well i'm doing my own part of it what about you be determined remain focused don't allow this, the challenges and the storm of life you know to make you complain and make you not to move forward i am making progress and i'm moving forward i expect you to do the same see you next time god bless